people can empower themselves with diet choices, with exercise choices, with nice herbs, if they can do a little research on their own. You know, some of this stuff you don't want to dig too deep in, but I also want people to have the knowledge to know the right questions to ask a functional medicine doctor. They don't even know what to ask sometimes. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. Today, we are talking about root causes with Dr. Jessica Petras, a local friend and rock star practitioner. Now, Dr. Jess is all about getting to the root cause of disease, especially autoimmunity and chronic diseases such as diabetes, cognitive decline, cancer, and heart disease. And based on her research, she has found four major root causes of disease, and that is stealth infections, heavy metals, environmental toxicities such as pesticides, plastics, and petroleum, and number four, emotional trauma and prolonged stress. And we are going to be tackling the most overlooked of the four root causes, and that is stealth infections and their role on our hormone health. Now, before we jump into this powerful interview with Dr. Jessica, I want to speak personally about autoimmunity and hidden infections and let you know that I'm planning to release an episode sharing what I personally have done on my healing journey with Hajimoto's along with recommendations and resources, not only focus on Hajimoto's, but also on autoimmunity. As I shared on Instagram and here on the podcast, I went undiagnosed for a couple of years. Initially, we thought it was stress, again, because of the brain fog, the fatigue, the weight gain, and the IBS. But after implementing those protocols, I was still feeling pretty crappy, fatigued, and the weight just wasn't coming off. Finally, we tested my thyroid antibodies, and sure enough, I had Hajimoto's. Now, initially, I was pretty devastated by this diagnosis and felt embarrassed that I kept missing it for a couple of years, and that's because my thyroid panel looked great, and therein lies the problem. Many people are being overlooked because of their preliminary lab panels looking okay or even great. That doesn't necessarily mean that your immune system isn't working in the background to target healthy tissue through molecular mimicry after tagging a hidden infection in the gut. Now, I 100% had a hidden infection in the gut, and it was playing a major role in the autoimmune development. A big part of my healing journey involved addressing the hidden infection along with changing my diet, filling in the nutrient deficiency gaps, and making sure my hormones were balanced. Now, this was a big wake-up call for me, and it was right in the middle of writing my newest book, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution. My diagnosis influenced a big part of the book, especially the chapters on toxicity, gut health, cognitive function, and the entire part three of the book, which included my 14-day hormone rescue program, And it was slightly adapted to include an anti-inflammatory diet or program that included reducing inflammation for the thyroid, the liver, and the gut with those types of healing foods. I actually do the program four times a year along with everything else built into the program, including movement, self-care, oils, I mean, all the goodies that are involved in that amazing program. In case you haven't grabbed the newest book, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution, it will be in the show notes here for episode 85. Now, before I jump into this powerful interview with stealth infections and hormones with Dr. Jess, I want to quickly celebrate your wins. One particular healing rock star is Terry Yang, and I'm excited to shout her out as she shared on Facebook about a couple weeks ago, give or take. Here is what she had to say. It has been an exhausting two years without clear answers for why I have felt so run down all the time. I found the Essentially You podcast when I was searching for a hormone podcast. And when I found it, I dove in to the interviews with Dr. Amy Myers, Dr. Alan Christensen, and her autoimmunity episodes led me to finding the right answers. I know I finally understand what is going on with my body. I have answers and I'm on the road towards healing. I have a ways to go, but I'm grateful to at least be headed in the right direction thanks to Dr. Maurice's expert interviews. Well, Terry, thank you so much for sharing your powerful story. Congratulations on the next step in your healing journey. I know that journey can be 
I wouldn't call it challenging, but I know that that's a journey ahead for sure. And I'm holding space for your continued healing miracles and healing pathway. Now, if you're listening, Terry, I would love to gift you my Superwoman blend. Just reach out to me on Facebook where we met, or you can connect with me on Instagram at D-R-M-A-R-I-Z-A. Well, fellow podcast listeners, I would love to shout you out too. You can reach out to me on Insta, Facebook, or by simply reviewing this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you love to plug into. That way I can continue to not only support you and what you're looking for, but also open the door for more women who are seeking solutions but not sure where to go just yet. Now, now that we're talking about solutions, let's dive into this incredible conversation with Dr. Jess. First, I want to take a moment to just sing her praises. Dr. Jessica Petras is a board-certified internal medicine doctor who left mainstream medical system in 2015 and embarked on an integrative healing journey that included the Gerson therapy, stem cell training, cannabis expertise, ozone, and into the field of stealth infections. She believes patients can best heal with a multidisciplinary preventative approach that encompasses mind, body, and spirit. She now practices at Nourish Medicine Center in San Diego, California. I told you she was local, but also she has her professional line of supplements for everyday conditions, and you can read more about those at drjess.com. Welcome to the show, Dr. Jessica Petras. How are you doing today, girl? I'm fabulous. I am so happy. You know, we just met a couple, I guess a couple months, well, several months ago now. Time is flying by. And the second I met you, you were radiating. You were just all the things that I'm always looking for in a doctor who is sharing her message in such a big way. I am so happy that we have connected and then we're becoming instant friends. Same. I felt an instant connection when I met you. You're kind of bubbly and upbeat like me. And I thought, wow, this could be a match made in heaven. We'll see. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, and the thing is, is that you are, I love your Instagram feed. And tell us real quick before we even get into this, what is your Instagram so that people can go and check you out there? Sure. So it's dr. period Jess, J-E-S-S period M-D. Love it. Okay. And we're going to be talking about a topic that a lot of my readers have been asking for, but I just hadn't find the right doctor to come on in. And that is stealth infections and hormones and how they're connected as well. So, and you are, I mean, this is your wheelhouse. This is really where you shine. Correct. It's sort of my comfort zone, if you will. Yeah. Well, that's so great. So (laughs) tell me what was the impetus kind of what brought you on this journey to really diving deep into stealth infections and to focusing on that inside of your practice? Originally, I was a hospitalist. So this is kind of taboo talk in the hospital world. And I always wanted a root cause to even patients admitted to the hospital. Um, I would see just a revolving door of admissions. And I thought, gosh, you know, these medicines and band-aids we give them aren't really helping them. And it wasn't until I sort of jumped ship and went to work over at Whitaker Wellness um, in Irvine, California, where I saw a patient who had major thyroid problems that I couldn't control. And it was still early in my career. And he ended up having Lyme disease. But I felt like I could have saved him a lot of suffering had I diagnosed that sooner. And it caught my attention so much that I, I vowed never to let that happen to a patient again. So I got really, I did really um, headfirst into the world of self-infections and really did a lot of work with Lyme, tick associated illnesses in general, anything with a biofilm and found, in my opinion, I think that this is a root cause of many, many chronic illnesses. Yes. And can you tell me a little bit about that? Because a lot of people, you know, we're... When it comes to stealth infections, I'm just going to give myself as an example. You know, I was diagnosed with Hajimoto's thyroiditis and we were trying to track where it came from. And I initially, honestly, I had thought that a lot of it came from a just complete burnout. I thought that that because of my sympathetic dominance, that I was running myself in the ground and my thyroid is definitely taking a hit. So I thought that that was the thing. And I think that that was also playing a role definitely one of the pieces to the puzzle. But then we were looking at my gut and sure enough, I had a a stealth infection. I had a stealth parasite and we knew that that was also driving it. And so often I I don't even know if doctors or that anyone's really looking at what those, those potential stealth infections could be leading to. So tell me a little bit about how you kind of went down the rabbit hole here to figure this out. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I went completely rogue on the Western medical system, actually. And sort of, I mean, I like to say, turn my back on the system that raised me a little bit. Of course, I still use allopathic medicine, but for me, I had to go into the world of integrative root cause diagnosis to really help these people. What I found is that even people who think they're just burnt out oftentimes have a hidden infection or stealth infection somewhere that's really driving that sympathetic overdrive. I really wanted to get to the root cause of disease. And in my opinion, that's just toxins, heavy metals, emotional trauma and stress or hidden infections. And what interests me the most is stealth infections because I truly believe that autoimmune disorders, chronic diseases stem from that, especially from the gut, just like you gave in your great example. Usually with the gut stuff and especially autoimmune diseases, as you know, they don't break down food properly. It all comes down to permeable gut membrane and the body responding to those foreign particles that translocate from the permeable membrane or the bacteria for that matter into the bloodstream. And then the body turns and quote unquote attacks itself. But we both know it really doesn't attack itself. It's looking for a trigger that's hidden. Right. It's looking for that hidden trigger. You know, it's interesting. We're seeing so many people who are showing up with Lyme's disease today who weren't diagnosed, had no way of looking for it because the like the traditional signs weren't there. So talk a little bit about what is Lyme and other tick associated illnesses and their symptoms. So you know, what, how, sh- how can we be looking for something like this? I feel like we have so much work to do when it comes to educating people, just understanding and knowing that something isn't right, to be asking the right questions, to get the right solutions for themselves. Correct. And and honestly, I feel like this starts a lot with the standard of medicine today. You know, they don't even have an ICD-10 code for brain fog. But you and I both know we see so many women in clientele who that's their main symptom. Oh my gosh, everybody. <laughs> everybody. But yet we don't have a billing medical code for that. So it's kind of brushed under the rug in allopathic medicine. Right. And, and it's um, just seen as like, oh, you're fine or, oh, it's something else or, oh, you're, you're stressed. Out, you're too stressed. Yeah, yeah. Or you're anxious or here's, here's a drug for that. Right. But why, you know, what is the root cause? So, you know, a lot of these patients, they suffer, they suffer needlessly actually, because the system tells them they're crazy or there's nothing wrong with them. So a lot of the symptoms I tell patients to look for, these come kind of in clusters, you know, Lyme disease or to other tick associated illnesses aren't just from ticks. We think now there was a paper in 1984 um, that said that they thought that they could be from mosquitoes, fleas, bed bugs as well. And, you know, who remembers a flea bite? Not many of us. And then people say, well, I didn't have the bullseye rash, um, which is diagnostic by the way, if you come up with that, but you don't necessarily have to have a bullseye rash. So many people up to 80% of people never see a rash and it doesn't always have to look like a bullseye. So that combined with some sort of emotional trauma or stressor really takes a hit on the immune system. And these patients suffer with things like brain fog, like I mentioned, joint pains, weird popping and feeling locked up in the synovial fluid and joints, as well as ear ringing or tinnitus, and even eye floaters or visual problems, extreme, extreme chronic fatigue. So these are the top symptoms that I see in most tick-associated illnesses. And that just doesn't include Lyme. That includes Babesiosis, Bartonella, Ehrlichiosis, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. All these co-infections can run in pairs and they are opportunistic. So they wait for your immune system to take a hit or you to be stressed out or have other little frenemies and bugs jump on board so they can all collectively overtake the immune system. And that's how these hidden infections work. They're really smart, actually. Hmm. No, I absolutely agree. Let's talk a little bit about that, this co-inhabitation and this co-connection, right, that these infections connect with. And you know so much more about this, but I know that they can they can hide in the lymphatics. They can ensure that they're stealth. When that is the case, how do we really get a chance to identify something like this? Great question. So, you know, the testing is sorely inaccurate, actually. And, you know, this is one of the areas I'm kind of disappointed in the CDC. They removed the two most accurate bands for testing for vaccine manufacturing. You know, the ELISA which is a screening test. It's an acronym, E-L-I-S-A, is, an, is a screening test for looking for Lyme disease. And it misses, you know, 60% of people. And then they don't get a secondary 
confirmation test, which would, ne- would normally be the Western blot. And that's much more accurate than the ELISA. So you have so many people that are missed in general if they're just going to a regular MD who's not Lyme literate. And then, you know, you're right. These suckers, they hide in the lymphatics, they hide in the synovial fluid. And so there's a lot of tests now, DNA connections being one of them, that um, provocates the spirochetes out of the tissues. So they will go and have you could go to an infrared sauna or do a workout or get a lymph massage and actually get those suckers out of the tissues and then test for it. So they're te- directly testing for spirochetes. And let me just kind of clarify what a spirochete is. That is a corkscrew shaped bacteria, guys. And that's actually the same shape and the cousin, like relative to syphilis. So it bores through the tissues because it is corkscrew and can get cause neurologic symptoms due to that fact. And actually, you know, we're now looking at people who were were deemed kind of crazy back then. They say like Napoleon. And we're thinking, was that really syphilis or was it Lyme? Hmm. Hmm. Because of the similarities there. Absolutely. Well, I, and I want to continue down this path. I feel like we could do a whole episode on Lyme, but just giving people some, some symptoms. But one of the things I'm going to keep, cause I have, I have girl, I've got questions for days and I want to connect <laughs> with some other hidden infections that we like, again, we, we keep hearing about, we keep thinking that maybe something's going on with us, but we just don't know. I want to talk about myotoxin illness. So we were hearing so much about toxic mold and it's proliferating across the nation. It's proliferating. What are some of the things that we should be looking out for here? What are some of the testing that we should be looking out for? Again, I know brain fog is a huge one, fatigue, brain fog, but what else? Because I have have several friends who are moving out of homes right now or who've moved out of their homes because of horrible toxic mold. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's so underestimated and underdiagnosed in the, in the allopathic medical community. I mean, I, these are another subset of patients that I really, my heart goes out to them because they suffer needlessly too. Really, there are a number of different ways you can look at toxic mold. The symptoms of that are things like, have you, do you have brain fog again, joint pains again, um, even some of the ear ringing I've seen with mold. I've seen nodular rashes on the hands and feet due to this, static shocks at night, almost like something's biting you, you have to move, inability to hold your urine, temperature dysregulation, the mycotoxins or mold really want prevent people from wanting to sweat because that kills the bugs. So, and the most important question is, have you been exposed to a water damaged building? Because the majority of people will say, yeah, you know, I worked at this place that I smelled mold or it's in my bathroom. We had a leak. And most people can kind of connect the symptoms to where they might've had the exposure Mold, you know, there are different types. Like, for example, black mold is usually aspergillus. There's also penicillin, fusarium. There's a number of different mold. And you can get this from some of the food supply, but the majority of people get it from a water-exposed building. So with these people, you know, you really want to look at different labs. And there's one of the shoemaker protocol who does a visual contrast sensitivity test. Sometimes these people's vision can be disturbed if they have mold, especially in the sinus cavities. There's blood labs they can do. And you can ask, you know, a doctor who's open and willing to try and look for things like TGF beta, MMMP9, BEGF. However, my favorite way to test for mold is the Great Plains mycotoxin test. That's a urine test. This test looks for all species of mold, and I found it extremely helpful in a lot of my patients. It's been extremely accurate with um, the questions I ask. And these people, they, they really, it's a war. Lime, mold, mycotoxin, Epstein-Barr, all these are a war. So you got to prepare for war. And that means sometimes people get better before they, or get worse before they get better, unfortunately. Okay, so let's talk about what can we do? Because the idea of someone having to move out of their house or tearing up their house is just such a crazy thing. What are some of the recommendations you're making for patients who are struggling in terms of changing their environment? Is that just the thing we got to We got to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I tell people they're like, you know, we, we ripped out our carpet, we put in new floors, we got all our we threw all our clothes out, all our curtains. You know, sometimes for some people that works, but occasionally there are people. And it's actually quite a bit of people. It's 25% of the population have a genotype where even after the mold exposure is removed, they continue to have SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome where their body, their immune system just spirals. Their HPA or hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis 
spirals, which means they're worried but tired or fatigued all the time. And it really gets involved with the hormones and gets on top of the entire immune system that way. So unfortunately for these people, sometimes just cleaning out the house or moving everything out is never enough. They're really going to have to move out of the situation for Mm. sure. Okay. You know, I just wanted you to say it. I just needed you to say it, girl. Because I think it's important that people are hearing that, that so often I've had people who have thought that they had gotten rid of it and then it comes back. And the thing about it is that in a lot of ways, even in the house, mold can feel so stealth. It can be hidden. You know, it can be hidden behind the walls. And are there things to be looking out for inside of the house? For sure. You know, if if you guys have had any sort of water leak in a basement, in an attic, if there's rotting wood somewhere in the behind the crawl spaces, you know, places you wouldn't look, this isn't always just blatantly black mold all over a wall. So you'll know it's definitely not. It can be in the tissues, if you will, of the house as well, just like it can be in your tissues. And it's not necessarily something that's going to be seen by the naked eye. Hmm. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to share on this on this particular topic that could really support people? I have, you know why? Because I, I have a question that I'm trying to get to. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> that I really want to get to, but I want it, I want people to feel like, okay, I, I, I understand this. I have a good sense of things. But you had mentioned how these infections can spin out our HPA axis. Our sleep, our libido gets out of control. I talk so much about the HPA axis inside of this podcast when I do my own little episodes because so often there's this myth around adrenal fatigue and not to say that women and people can't have adrenal fatigue, but usually it's understanding that it's the HPA axis that's been spun out of control well before we ever get to a place where the adrenals are saying, okay, I'm over this, right? Correct. So tell Correct. me a little bit about the implication because I know, you know, it's people don't realize that stress can come in multiple forms, right? It's chemical, it's physical, it's infections, it's a war inside of the body, or it's even perceived, right? It's scrolling through Instagram, you see something offensive and bam, you have that <laughs> moment, right? So yeah. it's it's a darn shame that stress can come in so many forms. And at the end of the day, the way that the body responds to it, as you know, is detrimental no matter what. It's definitely my biggest area of focus is, you know, how do we, how do we mitigate stress in the body? And what I really want to go into is how these infections are creating stress on this really important system in this in the body. Great. Yeah, that's uh, you said it beautifully. And if you guys haven't seen Dr. Marisa Snyder's video on Facebook on adrenal fatigue, and if it's a myth or not, you guys should go watch it. I actually watched it right before we got on this podcast and she's right. So it's interesting that you're asking me this question. So yeah, you know, people, the quote unquote, the buzz phrase adrenal fatigue is, is technically technically wrong. It's more the hypothalamus and pituitary and the way the brain speaks to those adrenals. And what I try and tell people all the time is, yes, there's physical, mental, and emotional stress. There's infection stress. And it's really the way your body perceives it or the way you perceive it. You know, if you perceive a stress, that's not a big deal to someone else, but it's a big deal to you. You're still popping off with the same hormones as if you're running from a tiger. If you have a self-infection in your body, your body is constantly fighting all the time. It may not be able to penetrate the biofilm or the sticky byproduct of substance that these bacteria or fungus produce and hide in, but it still knows there's something wrong. It's setting off little mini inflammation throughout the body when it sees something. Inflammation, that's your own body causing you to suffer with fever and swelling. That's your own body's protective mechanism. So it kind of sees and does that throughout the body periodically, which can really wear on a person over time. You're fighting aimlessly, but not succeeding at beating this hidden self infection. And so over time, the communication between the brain and the adrenal gland starts to suffer. The connection between inflammation and the adrenals and the brain starts to suffer. And all this Give, eventually gets to the sex hormones because as, as we both know, there is something a best phrase as well called the pregnenolone steel, where after you have a peaked cortisol or the stress hormone, you're stressed for so long, it actually starts to pull out the manufacturing of the other sex hormones. And so people's whole cycle between sex hormones, thyroid hormones, adrenals can really become screwed up. And actually I liken this to a stool with three legs. One leg is the sex hormones, one leg is the adrenals, one leg is the thyroid. And if any of those legs are wobbly due to infection or perceived stress somewhere else, even too much physical extra exercise can do it. People lose their periods all the time that way. That's because there's three legs of that stool and they're all connected on an axis. So if there's any prolonged stress, regardless of what it is, as long as it's a stress to you, it will be detrimental to the body. This includes infections or anything else. Mm. 
Well said. Thank you so much for giving us some clarity on that. These are the questions I get all the time. And it's so hard for people to understand the connection, you know, because so often, you know, when we're not well, we just want to be better, right? And we're just like, why don't I have my period? Why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? And we really have to figure out and dig deeper into it. So I just want to, I'm really happy to have you on just to give a little bit of clarity as we open up kind of the, the possibility of what could be happening in the body. Now, the other infection I want to talk to you about, and I, I do want to head back into this conversation in just a moment, but I do want to make sure I make time for it. But Epstein Barr, so many people, I feel like, again, this is a very, very hidden infection. And we don't realize the implications of Epstein Barr on the body. So tell me a little bit about kind of what your concerns around this particular hidden virus is and what we should be looking out for. How should we be looking at to test this? And where does it have some? profound implications on our hormone system as well, besides what we just mentioned a minute ago. Well, you are far ahead of your time just knowing what you know. I'm telling you, I agree with you completely. I think this this is my least favorite infection to treat. And it's because it is so hard to get a handle on and to even diagnose sometimes. I firmly believe that our blood testing is sorely inaccurate on Epstein-Barr. I have seen people tell stories of having it and immediately their immune system crashed. I have a patient who had acute Epstein-Barr that she was hospitalized with. Her thyroid TSH is, cannot be controlled. And now she's lost her period for a year. So this, this infection is quite a problem. Um, it's suspected that up to, that 90% of people are positive for Epstein-Barr, whether they really remember having mononucleosis, which is the famous disease it causes, whether they remember having that or not as, as a teenager or a child. And the way it affects some people and not others' immune systems remains to be seen. We're not really sure how that works. However, I do I think you believe this too, is the interplay of, you know, whatever stress you have going on in your life, as well as other uh, co-infections that may be on board and other environmental toxins or heavy metals that are stored in the body and hidden as well. And eventually it can get on top of the immune system. This bug is completely insidious. It will lie in wait. It's the most patient and opportunistic thing in the world. It's literally the possessions they talked about in the religious text, in my opinion. There was a study that came out of Cincinnati last year that showed that it was linked to seven different autoimmune conditions. And what it does does is hijack the DNA transcription in perpetuity and turn it into its own. And so it's been linked to things like fibromyalgia, juvenile diabetes, I believe rheumatoid arthritis as well. And there's seven different ones. This is a virus that is being overlooked in my opinion and not treated. And, and viruses are tough. You know, we have trouble with viruses, obviously in the medical community. We do. I feel like it's the ultimate virus is being the ultimate stealth kind of infection that's going on in there and Epstein-Barr, you know, all the research that I have read as well, you know, we see so many of these autoimmune triggers that is, it's often, well, I don't know if it's always oftentimes, but we're seeing that there's these stealth viruses that are creating it. We got a sense of what's happening with these infections and how they're hiding in the body. And some of these I know can, can lie in wait, kind of like the Epstein-Barr. What are some of the triggers that we should be mindful of? You know, we talked, you've mentioned briefly heavy metals. We've mentioned briefly, you know, gut concerns around leaky permeability, stress, right? Stress and, and then other co-infections. So tell me, Dr. Jess, what are you seeing oftentimes that can really just send us into this spiral? What, what are some of the triggers that we should be mindful of, even if we don't know that these stealth infections are going on inside the body? So I'll tell you one a lot, one that's people don't think about a lot is surgery. So, yeah. So, you know, just a physical surgery and it doesn't have to be, you know, this big major surgery, it can be something relatively minor. And if you view it as a stress, your body will too. And this will activate many people. I've seen this happen with many people as well as, you know, just emotional trauma and stress as well. You know, divorce, losing a loved one, these kind of things are so underestimated in the very left brained allopathic medical world. I can't stress that enough with people. That I love that you're talking about stress because it is so, so, so important. And that means, like I said, any sort of stress, even over exercising, can do it. So, these type of triggers, you know, people don't necessarily think about, even food poisoning can do it. If you're kind of hanging on by a thread, you know, even getting pregnant can do it. I've seen so many women say, I was fine and then I got pregnant, my hormones went crazy and I've felt terrible since. And that's because we're not necessarily tuned up or maybe living our, our best health prior to some of these traumatic or experiences or tr physical changes in general. Yeah, I have so many friends that have been diagnosed with Hajimoto's thyroiditis postpartum. 
Oh, it just I know, was right? so intense. Yeah, it just sent their bodies into a spiral. Even pregnancy is a stressful occurrence. I mean, the fact that we're able to even create life is just mind blowing, you know, and and it's a stressor on the system. It's a stressor on the system. So I think that that is so, yes, even pregnancy could create. I hate to say that. I don't know if you're any ladies in your day or anything, but no, still make go make babies if that's what you want to do. Absolutely. (laughs) We can help. Don't worry. (laughs) We can help get you back on track. Yeah. So we've got some sense of triggers. And you know what? I hadn't even thought of surgery, but I, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I just so many accounts of people getting diagnosed with an autoimmune condition, even cancer post-surgery because just there was this massive triggering event that happened. So yeah, it's usually so often I hear someone has a surgery and then this other diagnosis comes up, which is such an unfair situation because no one wants surgery to begin with. And last thing you want to do is get a secondary diagnosis opposed to just healing from that experience. It's so common. I mean, I saw this yesterday with a patient. It's so common. I just wish patients knew how to take care of themselves before if we have a planned incident that might be stressful on the body, like a pregnancy or a surgery. I just wish we could see patients to tune them up beforehand because it is these things are preventable. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the tune-up. Let's talk about First and foremost, it's important that people seek out a functional practitioner like yourself. You know, Dr. Jess, I, I, I have a feeling you have a waiting list, girl, in your <laughs> practice of people trying to, people going to 10 to 12 doctors and finally landing in your office without without any answers beforehand is what I'm guessing is happening. You know, they keep getting the same answer, the same answer until they finally decide to search out someone like yourself. But what can we do besides finding you when, and unfortunately I still feel like there's not enough of you out there. What is the, some of the work that we can start to do to really help support our bodies? You know, even if some of these symptoms are so subclinical, we have literally no idea, but we want to ensure that we don't trigger something to kind of flare up in the system. Correct. And this is a great question because my slogan is be your own best doctor for a reason. So I really like to empower people with information about how to heal themselves. By the way, I love your slogan, girl. I love it so much. (laughs) Your mind has become the CEO of your own health. And I was like, oh my goodness, we're so in alignment. I just love it. Okay. So tell me, girl, tell me how to be my own doctor. Yes, exactly. I love I love your slogan too. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So to be your own best doctor, you know, I want to empower people. So if you have symptoms that your doctor is shrugging off, brain fog, joint pains, you're oh, always tired, always anxious, always depressed, please, please, please start to take control of your health. And here's how. First of all, look at your diet. Are you eating food your ancestors would recognize? Are they filled with chemicals? Are they filled with growth hormone? Are they filled with fillers and gargum and gluten and xanthan? That is really, in my opinion, chemicals feed self infections. The body has problems breaking down chemicals it doesn't necessarily recognize that our ancestors wouldn't recognize. If you can't reach into your fridge or cabinet and cook with it, don't eat it. And that's my mantra for my patients. So I really, we, we remove inflammatory foods from the diet that removes a lot of inflammation from the body. The other thing that you'll want to do is there are a lot of specialty tests that people can order on their own if they can't get to a functional doctor. Great Plains Lab lets patients order tests themselves. And there are a lot of doctors who also do teleconferencing now who can go over these tests with you. More so, I would love the patients to actually, or clients to actually look into sweating if they're not burnt out all the time and their cortisol is not in the toilet. You know, it really does help to sweat things out. And if there is a hidden infection found, I incorporate a protocol called Killbine Sweat. And it is usually um, something like my own microbiome master, which is 11 different wildcrafted herbs and it's a parasite and gut cleanse. Or I love biocidin as well. Wonderful product. You know, you give it a little bit of time to absorb about an hour. You take a great binder, like activated charcoal, zeolite clay, apple pectin, silica, something like that, and then go sweat. And if you are too burnt out to do something like hot yoga or a gym, go to an infrared sauna. I really believe root diseases come from four places and this gets three out of the four places. It'll get environmental toxins, it'll get heavy metals, and it'll get many hidden infections with the biofilm. People can empower themselves with diet choices, with exercise choices, with nice herbs if they can do a little research on their own. You know, some of this stuff you don't want to dig too deep in, but I also want people to have the knowledge to know the right questions to ask a functional medicine doctor. They don't even know what to ask sometimes. Mm -hmm. That is so true. That is definitely the concern is, and I think that's why I'm so grateful that you're out there educating people so they know the right questions to ask. So eating food foremost, moving the body, sweating it out. 
I know that you've got some gorgeous supplements that we're going to be having people check out as well. So tell me a little bit about a couple of those. I know you mentioned one. My product that I mentioned first was Microbiomaster. That's actually my flagship product. I created, it's made so out of love. I started making these supplements in the basement of my house, handmade and sourcing organic herbs myself until I grew so big that I was able to get them into a GMP and NSF certified uh, warehouse where I'm involved in some of the sourcing now. So it was a beautiful journey and I have 15 different products now, wildcrafted and organic, and they're made with not just herbs and whole foods, but also minerals and vitamins. So I tried really hard to incorporate answers to everyday problems, things like stress, things like the thyroid, things like the gut and the mind and immunity, a number of different things that you can hit there. Like for example, Thyroid Master is the precursor, the precursors to making thyroid hormones. All the nutrients are mandatory nutrients in making thyroid hormones. So I tried really hard to give people whole food and whole herb answers to their problems so they don't have to take 30 different medications um, with side effects. I really wanted them to kind of take power on their own, change their lifestyle, change their habits and incorporate herbs. And they really can be their own best doctor at that point. Hmm, I love that. Now, Dr. Jess, honey, where can we, besides going on Instagram, where else can we find you? Where can we look you up and get some more incredible information if there's somebody who wants to know more about you? Yeah, thank you. Actually, so I have a website where I blog. Um, it's drjess.com. So um, super self-explanatory. And then I also have a YouTube channel, Dr. Jess MD. And we mentioned Instagram. I'm also on, I have a business Facebook profile as well, where you can get some of the same videos and information. And I will be coming out with some more modules, webinars, and videos very soon. So people can get even more information if they're chomping at the bit. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. And yes, your YouTube channel is amazing. She's got great IGTV, so Instagram TV videos, but really where she goes into it, like gets into it, it's going to be on YouTube. So if you guys want to dive deeper into Epstein Barr or into toxic mold or into understanding some of the testing or what kind of herbs are going to get you back on track, that's where she digs even deeper. We just scratched the surface today. And I know that this is probably going to bring up more questions than answers for you. I just want to make sure that you are all set to go and check her out. If indeed, you're looking for like really the, going deep into those stealth concerns. There's not a lot of doctors out there who know what Dr. Jess knows. Dr. Jess, honey, thank you so much for coming on. And I'm so excited for our tea date tomorrow. I'm, I'm just so grateful. I just get to hang out with you, girl. Hi, girl. I'm so excited too. I can't wait. So it was lovely. I'm honored that you had me on. Absolutely. Well, have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks, hon. Talk soon. Well, it's pretty clear that I am absolutely in love with Dr. Jess's message, and I am so grateful that she has chosen to leave mainstream medicine to look for those real solutions to healing the body. I also want to thank her unwavering commitment to educating the masses on how to get to the core root of these diseases and to be able to leverage these solutions at their fingertips. Her supplements are an amazing place to start, especially if you're trying to get rid of toxins and trying to clear those hidden infections. I wanna strongly encourage you to go and follow her on Instagram because her content will blow your mind. She is at Dr. Jess MD on Insta. And you can check her out at drjess.com. Her full suite of supplements and solutions can be found there. Even more content and videos and explanations. She goes deep into stealth infections and toxicity and how simple things that we can buy and have in our home every day can help us clear those. Now, if you want, you can just go to the show notes for episode 85 or to my website, drmarisa.com slash podcast. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and listening in to the Essentially You podcast. On the next episode, let me tell you, I am so excited about this. I am bringing on author Maya Dunsonberry, and we're going to be talking about the truth about how bad medicine has left women dismissed, misdiagnosed, and sick. Now, she has an incredible book out called Doing Harm that I have been reading for the last several weeks. And if you follow me on Instagram and my stories, I've taken several pictures of the book over the last couple of weeks, especially when I was in Mexico. This book is so 
compelling and it, it, it digs into the research of how so much of our medicine is not geared towards women. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that and, ex and really hear kind of the direction that we need to go for women's health and women's hormone health, definitely catch my interview with Maya. We are going to be diving deep into what the problem is and how to solve it. Well, until this next episode, have an amazing day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Mm -hmm.